uh, went well. Now, my friends, as uh, you all know, uh, we are going to have the second sermon along this sutta. Please be seated comfortably and give the consent with three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Namo tasa bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhas namo tasa bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhas namo tasa bhagavatu arahatu samma sambuddhas sache so bhikavi asutava putujjano I think Puna Bhava Echeti Evang Hite Bikave Mogapurisa Suotataro Oti Seyata Pisa Yavakalapi Tatmaya Vyabangya Hanyamana Titi Dear Venerable Dhamma friends, yesterday we tried to get the basic background understanding over the ground clearing work of this particular sutta, Yavakalapi Sutta. That's uh, uh, named, it's a bundle of Bali or bundle of paddy, whatever may be, uh, harvested bundle. And when it put into a threshing ground, according to the sutta, it is a, a crossroad. And people come and start beating, or we call Madhavanava in <coughs> singular, and when it is happening, uh, six people having a very heavy stick and keep on beating. And while it is happening, the seventh person also come and beat uh, in order to separate grains from straws. And when, that is the example. So the Buddha is finding a uh, epithet by an example telling something like that uh, people those who are ever entertaining uh, visual objects with the eye and the sounds with the nose the ear and the smells with the nose and the taste with the taste buds in the, your tongue and uh, bodily comfort in your tactile sensation of your body and thinking about daydreaming, fantasizing about uh, future planning. So these are the six people uh, beating according to the, along the sensuous pleasure. And of course, uh, whenever it is happening, Everyone, not only human, even the animals, they are all, always thinking about desirable visual objects, desirable sounds, desirable smells, desirable tastes, and desirable comfortable uh, seatings, and uh, desirable thoughts. So if that is the case you will be perpetuating in your sansara. Uh, therefore, this kind of people, the Buddha <clears throat> recognizes as unheard people, those who have no any acquaintance with true people or noble friends. So this is considered as the norm. Of course, you have to add one part in India, specifically the time of the Buddha, not even that, even now, there are some other people, they are self-mortification. They are completely do away with looking at these desirable objects, visual objects, and away from the sounds, smells, taste, touch, and thinking about uh, self-torturing. That's the extreme. But that is a religiously extreme people. So, but the example cited here is <clears throat> natural people. They are always thinking about the pleasure principle, as I mentioned yesterday. So they are keep on seeking the pleasure. This pleasure is known as materialistic pleasure. 
and that is in uh, ali we call amisha sukha so incessant from the in uh, the uh, beginning of the human kind they are ever searching 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 but the, for the last 20 years 200 years is very specific because of the uh, modern science and they are very fast now uh, searching and experimenting for the uh, beautiful pictures and good resolution and all the kind of thing and the sounds it is um, stereotype uh, stereo sounds and mo- mono sounds and far away very clear without distractions and uh, smells uh, refining 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 getting the exactly the uh, smells and the taste have been engaged in the tea industry tea tasting to get the, the real aroma the real taste and searching for the, the best tea as far as the tea is concerned eh? whatever it may be and the comfort and the luxuries and our uh, vehicles and the day to day household furniture <clears throat> earlier these things were only available for the maharajas in india but now they are very common in the middle class people they can have all the kind of thing and uh, visual objects and sounds very common due to this television and the radios and the smells and the taste everything now, now fairly accessible to the normal middle class people not on the top class people and upon that they are more in an accelerated manner they are go in search generation by generation research by research they are publishing so much of things telling we got a very good visual things social media and we have very very good music uh, not the medium wave short wave but fm and directly you can experience and the smells tastes uh, bodily comfort and uh, daydreaming fantasizing they are living in the dream world that today we are fairly achieved but tomorrow definitely we are going to get more refinement so likewise they are perpetuating their sansaric journey because they have never heard about that is the buddha recognized them as unheard commoner they keep on doing that that's a no political uh, five year plan 10 year plans always promising the country you will get if you are voting me to me i will give more refined thing and the economists they are they have long 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 formulas to give more and more pleasure and the social scientist this is we are going to make a world without poor people everyone is in the duppatunnali loke as everything is equipped and for the moment we have achieved a great one day we'll have it so they are for political social and economic people they are only one oh, they have one eye blindness seeking seeking pleasure so the buddha says that kind of uh, having the liking and disliking desirability and undesirability they never think about unlike thing undesirable thing only the likings and desirable thing that's the sixth person coming and beating on the the bundle of this bali or bundle of this rice and that is because they have never heard about dhamma they have not met with any people those who have immaterial kind of pleasure that's called religious kind of pleasure and uh, spiritual kind of pleasure so in the world today from the western point of view the, the theism is being rejected many become atheist because earlier they believed the, the theism but when the science came 
it was a real, real, real challenge. So therefore, to the these people, science gave, no, no, this is not the intelligent design. We have our own design. We have our own will. We have our own volition. So gradually, definitely, we are going to higher pleasure, not after the death in this very life. So therefore, there's a huge clash at the beginning of this uh, invention of the scientific development, technological development, multimedia, multinational, multi-billion companies keep on doing. So hardly younger generation get a chance because their parents are idiots and their grandparents are idiots. And grandparents says, ah, we are so, so unlucky before the intention, invention of the technology and others, it happened us to die. But our second generation will be, they will reach. And they think their generation will be rich. Hardly so once some, someone observed the deterioration or the erosion of the moral responsibilities. Science never take any <clears throat> responsibility to the morality. If it is so, you can't be blind like that and you can't believe, uh, you cannot be uh, one-sided going for the pleasure principle. The morality and the ethical values are something different. Uh, every culture, every society had earlier, they were abiding by nature and uh, social responsibility and uh, ethical rules. And the religious uh, sector is the one to interpret what must be your social norms, what must be your uh, ethical norms. They took the responsibility. You fools do not know. Please come to the church. Please come to the temple. We will teach you. But they are the worst kind. They are the utter violators. So people got discouraged about the religious thing. And therefore, they started atheism. And reason in the recent research, they say uh, 60% of the scientific researchers are atheists. But still 40% believe God as well as the technology. And imagine... From Sunday morning to Friday evening, you are working in a lab and experimenting research to pleasure principle. But Saturday and Sunday, you go to the church. So what a kind of a, a treatment for your mind? Five days, you are vehemently working, working, workaholic, specifically in these societies. And uh, weekends, they are going to the church and all the kind of thing. And the particular person, he says, what a kind of a twist for the mind. And they are the people taking the higher post in the teaching and the political, this thing. Everything they say is uh, definitely we are, sometimes they say we are believing the God, but we are definitely on the science Science is assuring. Science see nothing, only the desirable thing, only the pleasure. So they get hardly any time to listen to a talk, let alone coming to come and sit here for two, three days. It's impossible. So really admirable when the Triple Brook organized a retreat for young adults. But you are the people targeted in this political, social, and economic listing. And for the educationists, they have no any, uh, no any syllabus for morality, ethical values. So therefore, now education, every country, every educationist understands it's a failure. But they can't stop it. The earth is becoming warming, global warming. Everyone, recently we had COP28, to uh, 28, I think. And uh, we were working a little bit with uh, Mindful uh, School. And UN, there is a 
sect they started, Faith for Earth. People should have some kind of a feeling for the earth upon which we are living. We are going deep, deep, deep and getting very heavy metal up. Heavy metal, heavy gases up. Liquid petrol up. And using, 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 using. And the carbon, for, uh, the, the gla glass house effect and the carbon release. The people, those who are responsible about the science and the uh, first world countries, on principle, they can't agree upon this reduction of the carbon or carbon neutral situation and cooling down of the earth. So they are coming and give a, uh, how do you call it, rhetoric talks. But the UN, there's a one sector. I don't believe UN. UN also another hand. So we started not on the faith, but mindfulness for earth. And we had some discussions and we uh, had the multi-faith uh, kind of uh, three sessions in Nisarramane. And the other thing is pollution. Internal and external pollution. Internal one we call the tension and frustration. When, but still they are not affecting your nervous system. When it comes to the hysteric level of trauma, definitely your nervous system gets upset and ultimately you are seeking displeasure in bad habits, drugs, womanizing, gambling. It is happening like anything. In Australia, I am not happy to take the talk into this politics. All are given to Aboriginals. They are not restricted to go gambling, enough money, alcohol. So what is happening? But instead, if someone is thinking about society at large is this way, pleasure principle, but I am standing single Whatever the corruption happened to you, any time you can start mindfulness. Never too late. That's why when we come here, we can see some youngsters, they come and start. So what is the lesson? What is the short message uh, in a retreat, mindfulness retreat? You, we are introducing immaterial kind of pleasure. The, the, the contrast is in the day-to-day -day activities, you seek pleasure and luxury through the visual objects, sounds, smell, taste, touch, and the bodily tactile sensation. But we ask you to, would you mind, as far as you are happy to listen what we are telling on the experimental basis, can you close your eyes? Okay. Then that faculty is closed. And we go, please go to a silent place, maybe a forest or under a tree or an empty place. You are volunteering. And go to a normal ambient situation, no smell, don't entertain taste, and keep the body posture just like a pyramid, just like an anthill, or just like a dagaba. And so that you have nothing to worry about the maintenance of the posture. And when there's no sounds, visuals and sounds and the taste and the smell and the bodily tactile movements and uh, bodily activities, I mean volitional activities, just see in the mind where it is. It's just like a wild bird trapped into a cage. It's so fighting, fighting, jumping up and down. And the, the classical example is a wild buffalo is a very, very uh, strong, very powerful. And you can catch buffalo and take to the village. It is not suitable to harness into a yoke and getting a harrowing and all the kind of... Therefore, you have to train the buffalo to put into a um, yoke. So imagine what once the buffalo is taken out from the bewilderness, 
how much it is fighting, 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 fighting. That's what exactly when a newcomer come to the meditation and close eye, ear, nose, tongue, the bodily tactile or visual object sounds and everything deprived. And mind becomes so fighting to go to the forest. What we do is we drive a deep peg and tie with the unbreakable uh, harness or rope and let the buffalo to fight, 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 fight. The, the pig is never giving any release and it is bound tight. After fighting, 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 it sleeps down just at the pig. So this is what we do in the early part of our meditation. The wild buffalo is taken out of the bewilderment, wilderness, and set it with one pig and one rope. The pig is the breath. The rope is the mindfulness. We are not tying it to the neck. Allow them to play a little. And after fighting, 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 sometimes the buffalo calm down. Even the wild elephants, even the wild birds taken to the society, that is what happens. Though each and every pet you are rearing, you are going against humanity. Please let them have their own way. But you think that topics are much, much better than while living in the forest because we are giving food, giving pleasure and every kind of... But you hate human. It's a psychiatric situation. Gidhara hadei balupati ye khari sarai nona uta mata vedi ye ngadarei. The housewife is more happy with the dog than the boy he is working at home. In in Canada, there's a very rich person. He wrote the last will for the dog. 67 billion rupees. And he wanted to get the court confirmation. The judge took little time and found... What is the maximum amount you can spend for the dog's happiness? With the research and bill and the food, legends and everything. And what the maximum lifestyle of the dog? Then he told that dog can't consume even one billion for his whole life. So what is the next? Next give to the other dogs on the earth. What the kind of what the kind of hate? They don't have understanding in Africa and in all Asia how much of people are sleeping without the food, without the dinner. Of course, you are also eating a dinner, but in the retreat we don't give the dinner. That is because of not, not the lack of the food. We volunteer to do it, but they have no that idea. They give it to the dogs. I am asking, give that to the Sati Pasala. <laughs> we can do something. Because we have a, such a huge bill. Daily we are training at least 200 uh, prefects and the monitors with the class, teachers. So we have to feed them. They don't know. And they we call the highest, the richest people. So therefore, as far as if you have a, some senses for the humankind, the production of the today grains is enough for two to three meals for all the population. But 40% of the grains are going for beer, spirits, and all the other kind of thing. You think it is for the well-being of the human? A few data available, but they can't stop it. Because the leading people, unheard, they are idiots. They have no chance to read or listen to the teaching of the Buddha. Even the Jesus Christ, read the paper, read their lifestyle. What the kind of people always he lived with the poor people? Going to the cowboys, Carpenters, 
fishers, fishing people, and they, they, they understood but what happened. Now, that is the message monks must give to the society, living a frugal life, two meals, living wherever maybe the hut you have, and the robes are given, medicines are given. So, but what happened to the monks in Sri Lanka? What happened to the monks in Australia? They're completely forgotten. And they appear like spiritual leaders to prescribe you what must be the ethics and the morality. Utter nonsense. Even after listening to the Buddha's teaching, I hate monks. Ultimately, after considering the mindfulness for eight years as a lay person, I was a CEO of a Norwegian company. At that time, I go, I was paid. If it is increasing, I had to pay 50% PAYE. So therefore, I keep it at low level and gave all the facilities. But I am meditating, meditating, meditating. But from morning to evening, I have to take whole 385 people people and sending plants to Norway and we are doing intensive agriculture. But still I found something wrong somewhere. So it is not a religious activity but 385 people uh, started the strike against me. 300 people appointed by me. When I go there only 85 people was in the company. And they one day told, please get out. And the board and the, uh, we were working in a GCC project. There cannot be any labor rights there. But it was a big issue for our company. And I was so shocked. This was my first job. At the beginning, I thought not to do a job, but did it. And meanwhile, one monk came and uh, he came to the company. He told, this is a golden opportunity. Jump. Get out. So I went to him and we live with him while the case is happening. And my boss, Mr. Swininjan, Anna Swininjan, when I go to the office, he showed me the letter. He has written on behalf of me, on behalf of me, I am resigning my job due to a personal reason. I was so happy. I never thought that I can get out of this job. And immediately I went to Nisarnavani. Because I have meditating. I was associating with a little amount of people uh, at that time. And imagine if it is happening to the unheard person, unmindful person, you would have committed suicide. We said, what a failure in the first job. That's why the Buddha says, if you are unheard, if you are just a commoner, you will keep on maximizing the pleasure principle, but then you can compare it with the, uh, the uh, people with the theoretical knowledge. This is materialistic pleasure. There is another option, immaterial kind of pleasure, go to a silent place, sit comfortably, cut off all the senses and see that is what you call the relaxation. That is what you call the um, that is what you call the happiness in the life. Because in your job they don't give that kind of a kind of thing. You can sit and meditate. I know that everyone sitting and meditating won't get uh, that kind of uh, immaterial pleasure. But when you are reading the today we had about 20 odd number of the reports and there were some uh, telling I started with that uh, discouraged mind but what to do at that time we had to do walking meditation while doing I felt kind of a relaxation and after that I sat and there at the beginning the this noise and that distraction and kind of thing but after enduring little there were some occasions either no thoughts or 
I don't know what is happening. And therefore, no fictional path or comfort zone. The Buddha put that into very contrast to it. This comfort happened because of the freedom from visual objects, freedom from sounds, freedom from smell, freedom from tastes, freedom from bodily activities, and mind is prepared. If it is not so, it's a torturing. Then he can say whatever the thing we are earning, that cannot be that cannot be experienced unless otherwise you know the method. The billionaires, they have money, but no time to spend the money. Because if it is away from one hour, so much of a loss. So he is in the perpetuation of maximizing the pleasure maximize the money, no time to spend. Even if we are given a chance to rest, they can't. Go Pandita Saido, when I was in Burma, he gave an example. Imagine a billionaire living in a big mansion. He's having enough visual objects and the wall paintings and their sculptures and the videos and family TV and everything. And the sound wise, he has audio, Dolby, stereo, musical groups, everything. And the smell wise, from the Kashmir, from the Iraq, he's having all the kind of things, smells. And the taste wise, he's having different stewards, and he can, they can order Chinese, Indian, Japanese, any kind of food. And he's having beddings and everything is full. But he can't sleep. I mean, so insomnia. So in an odd hour, one day, when you go to his master bedroom, he had a nice sleep. And that time, the cook, he was baking a nice uh, chocolate cake, for example. It came so nice, he gave, go and wake up the master, says, master, if you can eat that in the hot hot, it will be very nice. Then the Pandita said, the person who got the rest after a long time, and this bloody fool is coming and asking for a chocolate cake. Whether he will give a promotion to the, uh, the baker, who will get fired. Imagine he is going to fire you, a bloody fool that I am. I was I had a long, after a long time I had a risk. Then he filed a case against. So when you are in visual objects, you and I can share, you have the pleasure. I mean, desirability, pleasure. Sounds, yes. Smell, the taste, that is what I came out. And eating is a pleasure. And uh, bodily comfort is a pleasure. But now you are claiming you have a much better pleasure, better relaxation, better comfort zone. Is it experienceable? When you are in a deep sleep? But I am giving you something experienceable. I am protesting you something verifiable. Now we have gone to no time, no space situation and you see it is better. Can we explain that? But the billionaire will say, this is something experienceable. No sound, no uh, visual object, no taste, no smell, no bodily tactile sensation, and mind is fully rest. You can't deny because you don't know. This is immaterial pleasure is thousand times better than what you are talking about. This is beastly. This is what you are talking and arguing is something uh, reptilian. But I experience, I can't compare it with your argument. So this is what, because your eyes are closed, no visual objects, ears are not bombarded with the sounds, and smells, no. And the tongue, 
is utterly resting, even you don't feel the bed sheet. In the inner sleep. And the mind is fully calm. You argue, the billionaire is arguing, that is much better than the, the, the visual object, sound, smell, taste, touch and everything. Very difficult to prove to the other people, those who have unheard about that. This is not the hearing and meditating, nothing. But he was suffering. He can't rest. You have, when you go to a, a job, they have stress leave. Have you heard about? They give enough work like a bull. And after stirring so much, when you go and say, I am about to crack and everything, okay, we have a, what you call stress leave. What the torture This is not the hell. This is on the earth. Which is what happened. Imagine a farmer living in the, the in the village area. He harvests twice a year and he's relaxing and he's very frugal and he's not not adding to the carbon trade. He's not pollu polluting and he's doing a multiplier effect for many people depending on that, but he's very relaxed. That I was doing agricultural in the intensive farming, it is kind of uh, exploiting the earth. The farmers are not traditional. So this is the difference I just wanted to I just wanted to show there is a kind of a immaterial pleasure. This is available for the learned people. But still they are not put into the rational thinking, they are not put into the meditation. And when that, that is the first sermon the Buddha is giving, okay, you people are very skillful, you are above average, the social level and kind of thing, please listen. Your job will not allow to be to take leave when the listening. Uh, education never give, please come. This is something religious, this is something spiritual. There is a kind of thing, it is only possible not for poor people, not for billionaires. This only available for the young, middle class, not the young, middle class people. We are so lucky. We are not billionaires. We are not so dirt poor people. But they have, they have different kind of mentality. Because in, once in a way we go to trip and jump into a sea and we feel some kind of a, some kind of a picnic mood and the relaxation. And if we can have that, extended, facilitated. The Buddha says, it, uh, you, the, now you had something accidental, there is a method. Start with moral responsibilities. Sila Sikha. And then I will teach you, I will give you Samadhi Sikha. Sila Sikha is the verbal discipline and the bodily discipline. That's why we started with the uh, Ajivattamaka Silya. But that does not address to the, the calming down of the mind. For that, I will tell you, focus only one single thing after closing your eyes and sitting. That must be a very neutral object, a repetitive object. You just keep on focusing at it, just like a target shooting person. You can't shoot on the first bullet. Keep on fighting, fighting. One day, it will hit the target. But still, to go into the bullseye, to aim at the bullseye, it's like so long track practice. Whenever it is hitting the bullseye, whether you are a Buddha or whoever may be, experience is exactly the same. When the mind is calm, you become human. At the time, you are a beast. Chasing rat race. And that is what the education is doing from age 5 to 25, 30. Chasing, 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 chasing. I spent, uh, I am a little bit idiot. I failed in the great uh, ordinary level, advanced level. Uh, therefore, 
I was the fairly an old guy in our batch. 1963, I hope. Uh, no, 63, grade 6. And I was born in 52. 58, something like that, I took into the school, primary. And then 63, went to the senior school. And I went to university in 75. Because at that time, university was a little in trouble. So all this time, I was fairly successful. I mean, I got the third grade uh, the degree as well as the third get class in the advanced level. I'm not a bright person. And the whole time, that's a prime time of a human mind. You don't know how it is spending. Because exam after exam, once that is finished, you go over the next. And you have the higher caliber, higher uh, grade exams. So ultimately, when you are 30, <clears throat> present civilization allow not for youngsters to get married. Because you have educational objectives. Therefore, early people just marry at the 16 and 17. Now you can't. Even 36 waiting. It is not such a uh, generalizable thing. I am just quoting. Huh? You will have the, with unmarried sex any age you can have. But I am not recommending it. I am telling just a, just a social norm. That's a social norm. If you are going to education and everything, the marriage and everything are going away. So this is the prime time. So my idea was, I got it at the university second year, the idea about mindfulness and I was the a most unqualified person because by that time all the precepts consciously broken. I master, but at the home and the village, I appear like a upasaka. Upasaka mama, upasaka ayya, but I know how, how cheating I am. But people do not know. And other thing is, they don't care. So when I am experiencing, I thought, had that happened in my age of 25, 24, 23, what would have been the result? Then I started this and the, you know, Nisan Mani, I got one guy, 17 years old, and he came that I was uh, studying it like a role model, and very easily they can catch, because their mind is less polluted. Now we have uh, youngsters at the grade, age six as a first grade. Easily we can teach mindfulness. They are naturally mindful. Because they can see parents are how fool they are at home. How, teachers how fool they are. So in the Montessori, uh, Montessori level, education uh, school, the teacher was interested in mindfulness and she volunteered to give it to the young children, 27 children was there, were there and asked, not, not telling mindfulness, not telling anything, uh, I am, we are going to have five years, five minutes of experiencing, experience of closed eyes, no sound and kind of thing, just see the mind. And after that, uh, ask the Research and some people told that I feel expansion, contraction, I feel the sitting posture, I feel in breath and out breath, I feel wandering mind, blah, blah, blah. There's a one very beautiful young girl, she, in her, in her term, she told, I see nothing. And the teacher was confused. And the teacher told me, okay, never mind, because she wouldn't have get the basic instruction. So next day, she tells, shall we do the same game today also? Okay, yes. And she observed that girl and she was so calm, quiet and waiting. And in a normal roster, ask her, she says, nothing. I experienced nothing. Then the teacher got that girl and says, when there is such a calmness, can you see the breath? Mm, okay, teacher. I will I will listen to you. Next time when I go to see seeing if there is nothing, <clears throat> I will try to uh, according to the experience uh, advices, I will see the breath. 
And next, that day she told, okay, teacher, when there is nothing, if I am focusing, I can see my breathing body. Oh, teacher was so happy. Then she asked, the teacher asked, then what happened? Again, it went to nothingness. Oh, such a great achievement because even we elders can't do it. Then she said, that is what I told in the first day. You can't understand. Now you are asking to give an object and see the nothingness. Meanwhile, Dhamma Vihari quoted that and told, if the teacher is misleading that girl at that age, your whole life is finished. But the teachers do not have that immaterial pleasure. They don't know this nothingness is some kind of a rest, some kind of a relaxation, some kind of lack of tension and fr frustration. No. So this is how younger the better. I'm very happy these two young girls, even they are not regularly practicing, coming and giving a notion. I asked how many minutes you can sit? 45 minutes, no problem, even one hour. Because their mind is not polluted yet, on the way of polluting, because they are going to schools. But again, I am repeating, whatever the pollution happened, if you keep on trying, one day, mindfulness can reinstall and that day exactly you can experience what the Buddha on the seventh day when the father is giving a, a ceremonial harrowing of the lands he went into a trance went up to the the tree and when the uh, the babysitters coming and see the prince is not there you would have heard about this story in the in Dhampasala so that is what we are crossing. We are telling, of course you are busy. This life, this time is the real, real dynamic life. And when it's happening accidentally, if you go there, you can have that kind of a immaterial pleasure. That is the real home of the humans. All the other visuals and sounds and kind of thing, beastly. For that only the whole world, that only for our parents, that only for our, uh, that is the way our teachers are teaching, professors are professing. They don't know. So Buddha simply says, unheard putujana, they keep on beating the the bundle six times with the six whackers. And the seventh person also coming, he is thinking about <coughs> pleasure seeking. And they consider this as yeah, their privilege. They consider I got this pass and that pass in the beginning of the name, so much of letters, and the end of the uh, name, there so much of letters. So much so they are idiots. We have BS. Bullshit. When you have MSC, MA, more MS, more shit. When the PhD piled deep and high, no brain. I went up to MS. And from the university second onward, I was a little bit of concern about the mindfulness. So I, of course, registered for MPhil, but I failed. <laughs> because my English was not so good. I did a very marvelous uh, the research in Mahavali H area. Uh, the very early uh, on-farm water management, anomalies in on-farm water management, but I my English was not so good. I reduced to MS, MA, MB, MA, M, MS more shit. So our parents, look at the parents, how they are uh, giving their children for this present way of uh, the me mechanism, the machine. I mean, there's no other way. There's no other way. Prince Siddhartha got private tuition and at age 27, he quit the palace. He became the king to be and married the first child born. Quit. If it is happening today, the wife will go to the human rights case. Luckily, he is a princely, so enough money for the wife and the child. But today, if you are going to do that is what happens. 
So therefore, to give and or have and to taste of the immaterial pleasure, at the beginning it happened in the occasionally single thought moments. To cite an example, sometimes you may see in between in breath and out breath, there is a one single point you can't experience, you can't demarcate with the in breath or out breath. For that you have to see the beginning, the middle of the, at the end of the in breath and waiting for the to see the beginning, the middle, at the end of the outbreak. And there is a kind of a thing, you feel like a mishap. You feel like lack of mindfulness. But that is the, that's the power of mindfulness. That never taught in Samatha Bhavana. Vipassana, after practicing and doing it, says, okay, it is not uh, consistent. There is a gap. There is a, there's a uh, blank. Left leg to right leg, just like a relay race, when the baton is passing from the one person to the other person, very critical. Without the dropping the baton, if you pass, that but the early person will stop, the second person will take the second lap. Each and everything in our seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, nothing consistent. They are broken pieces. If you know the art of, if you know the art of thin slicing of time, you can see so much uh, broken points. See this parquet. It appear like a one plank. If you start from here, you can sweep to the other point. But come here about 15 years or 20 years, there are a lot of cracks. Then we are sweeping, the dust start going into the uh, in between cracks. Whenever you are going to sweep, dust start there because it is fallen in between. Now we tap it like a one gloss over. So Vipassana is teaching you this. Uh, Unexperienceable, uh, the, the blank points. At the beginning, when you, you are confronted with, you think like it's a lack of mindfulness, lack of concentration, lack of attention. No, it is a result of attention. For that, what do you need? You need go prepared for that. Not go in preparing for the breath. The breath is the guiding line. You understand the sensuous pleasure. And whenever it is mastering, it leads to the consciousness without any sense pleasure. In between, in breath and out breath, no visuals. Of course, your eyes are closed. No sound, no taste, no smell. Even the tactile sensation, you see it is dot dot line, which is not a complete line. If you know the dot matrix printer, it's every letter and everything is given by nine dots. But at looking at, you feel like a consistent letter. No, only nine dots are there. Our life is dot dot line. We consider it's a persistent, com com complete, undisturbed flow. That is our this thing. Leave it, no harm, but observe it. Then the Buddha says, citing an example, O oh monks, I will give an, an, another example. This is superstitious life. There was a war between the celestial being and a non-celestial ghost and the yakkas and, you know, asura, asura. And there are, asuras are using all the naughty tactics, but the sura, the devas, they are using legal, that means, uh, the present tense, present uh, situation, the conventional war and uh, guerrilla war. Better people, they don't have big armies, they give an ambush. So that is the way the asuras. So suras, they have the formal conventional way. The sura, the, the leader, Sakka, he told, if at all we are going to win, catch all the the commander of the other side, bring it to me. Asura told, if we are going to win, catch all the uh, Saka, the commander, bring it to me. And the Buddha says, ultimately, Sura, Sura, so means a celestial being, won it. Ultimately, they bought the, 
Pepe Chitti, the by name the king of the Asura, bind, bound in five places all the four limbs and the neck and put in, in front of the Saka. That means the commander of the other side. And soon after the war, he's a, he's a war prisoner. And then he was thinking, who? Uh, the Vepachitti. This is a very nice place. Even after the, uh, losing the game, I am getting celestial visual objects, celestial sounds and celestial everything. And therefore, if I am to recognize I am at a Sura, he found all the bondages are gone. He became like a member of uh, Devas or Suras or Celestial. Then again, he thought, what a kind of thing. I am misrepresenting the leader of the Asura. And now when I come to the Devaloka, I feel like this is better. And then again, the, soon he think all the five bound, the Sura is correct. He get the celestial experience. Whenever he think, no, no, I am a leader of the Asura, then he become uh, bounded. Something like that, if you have the celestial, the material pleasure and immaterial pleasure, whenever you have, whenever you are in the immaterial pleasure, if you are thinking about the material pleasure, you get tension, you get frustration, no tools, no soon. Even if you are in a, a sensuous pleasure, if you think, I have the potential, I have the possibility, of course now I am bounded with the day-to-day chorus and the families and all the kind of thing, but I will try my best to allocate few minutes to go for the immediate pressure. Immediately you feel the relaxation. You are not started yet. The Buddha says the Asura's bondages. So whenever he recognizes the Sura, he is free. Whenever he tried to be a Asura, he is with five bondages. It, Buddha says the Sansara is more subtle than that. So therefore, nothing to worry that you have to become enlightened. Well, only thing is, you must understand it's a birthright of human beings. We are born to relax, born to em- em- emancipate. We are born to understand that the human can do it. Animals can't. Other be- beasts and other beings can't. We got that possibility. The potential. That is because we have done so much of good things in our past life. But when we come here, if you forget about that, going to start with the pleasure principle, you are bonded. You get tension. You get frustration. You are always self-cursing. Find the fault with others. You find system is wrong. I must be pedantic. And then you start to try to be perfect. No, mindfulness give a simple message. You have not achieved it, but you have the potential, the possibility. That we call, simply put, the correct view. Let's go Samadhiti. So samadhi never happen only by listening. When you are practicing, occasionally you can see some events where there is no experience, no, no we call blank. Or sometimes we feel the the we feel unaccountable, unaccountable in space and time dimension. That is not scientific. Scientists they say it's a mystic. No, no. You can do it again and again. Whoever it is doing, it is something verifiable. Therefore, science is based upon only two criteria. If something is scientifically proved, anyone who is doing should have the same result. Any place you are doing, it must have the same result. So therefore, when you are practicing mindfulness, whenever you go to this blank, of course, at the beginning, it's it's just a blink. Even the Buddha, even you, even any Muslim person, Catholic person, Hindu person, experience is the same. So whenever I have multi-faith kind of sessions, 
I am thankful for them because they are coming. Then I say, shall we go for this uh, silent sitting and try to focus upon the the breath or whatever may be prominent? And within the 10 minutes, it's one split second. If they can aware, here, now I am. The awareness of here, now I am. Whatever the denomination, we become human. We become human. It won't take a longer time. I mean, to achieve the full fledge, it take whole life. But to get the taste, get the verification, get the, the, the proving. And today, in Sri Lanka, we are in a multi, uh, cultural, multi-religious way. Many other non-Buddhists are very open. They are coming to, they are coming to mindful school. All the religious masters gave me their consent, but they don't think that you are convinced, going to convince our children to the Buddhism. No, now mindfulness is a world issue. So far, two Times magazine allocated for mindfulness, the Scientist magazine, so much of articles. So therefore, it is no more religious and the early part is just physics. You can test and do. So therefore, I am so happy, so proud because Sri Lanka came up to that level and exactly the message came like uh, mindfulness and it is not a big mainstream thing, but uh, I can't deny that also because 4.5 million children now practice Sunday, Monday 10 time, ten minutes, Wednesday 10 minutes, Friday 10 minutes. The Minister of Education put a cabinet paper last December, not this one, last December, and local whole last year, we had it. Now, soon I come back and landed in Brisbane, we had a Zoom meeting. He says, now Bhante, you are taking so much of time and money in Kaduela, why don't you uh, go to the local I mean, decentralized temples and ask them to come and have a session? He only, only initiated in one temple. That particular monk told Bhante, if you, are, if you are doing, you will be doing on the three hours or four hours, I can give seven days residential retreat full free of, free of any cost. So therefore, it's a kind of a mainstream. So therefore, you coming here, I mean, that is the, what we call the uh, young adults. When I go to New Zealand, I again landed Melbourne because of you. Otherwise, I would have gone directly to uh, Perth. But I'm so happy. I don't expect so much of results. I don't expect so much of so on, sakadagami, anagami, arahat. That is not. Just give a test. Just give a test. And I am hoping to talk a little more about tomorrow also. So with that remark, I would like to uh, sum up the, the day's talk. So therefore, do it. Yesterday also you did it. Today also you did it. Do it with much faith. Was what you are doing. I am not asking the faith on the, on the celestial beings or God or nothing. Even the Buddha can't help you. He can only give instruction. Do it in a faithful way. More dif difficulties in the beginning, so much so, so quickly, you will go into this comfort zone. You will go into this uh, least frictional path. And that we call a birthright birthright of human being, we are giving nothing because you, are, because you are born with mindfulness. We are just catalyzing, giving a chances. Please take this chance and practice faithfully. Thank you very much for listening.